Yeah, let me show you. So we're starting at the front. People come in here. Um, this is reception. And one of the critical things for Senior Planet is that people don't, people shouldn't feel any stress when they arrive. So we wanted it to be, you open the door and you're right here at this very welcoming space. It's meant to be very inviting, you're kind of drawn in. Even things like the, when they design the curved walls, uh -huh. curves for us emotionally, visually mean mo movement. Yeah, they mean yeah. like sort of they draw you in a little bit. Instead of a sharp edge, it's supposed to be more inviting. So this will be the, the first place where the, you know, the reception will be. There's going to be a little um, screen that has classes and information about that. You can get information here on the classes. And then once you come in, you maybe you'd sign in for your class or just say that you're here and then you can come in. We don't have any requirements for membership or participation aside from that you're 50 plus and that you can work in a kind of a collective space like this and respect other people. All right, so when we come in here, you walk in. This place, the way we designed it is that it should feel almost like a miniature little town. Oh, wow. So the central space here, we call it the main street, and you'll see when we get all the carpets down that there's like a section of carpet that goes kind of from here to here, straight back, and there's a series of bench kind of chairs oh. um, that also have potential for little screens that'll come oh. out of them. And so that would be your sort of first area. So if you come in here, you kind of get drawn in there to kind of plop yourself down with a tablet or whatever. Over here in the front wall, there's gonna be a little seating area. And because we are passionate about creative expression for older adults, and because it's Wynwood, uh, and it's you know Miami, Miami, we want it to be art-centric. And so this wall here is gonna have about a half dozen LCD screens that are of different sizes, and we're gonna project people's art onto them. So we've got a half dozen screens here, we've got a space there for a piece of art, there's space on the walls as well. So we're gonna kind of build up a little bit of a sort of, just like rotating art collection with, with you know, mostly done by the folks that are, that are participating, and from the community as well, so it's more flexible. Um, we're gonna have a little technology display area here in the front, because people wanna see some tech when they come in, and it kind of sets the tone. Um, over here, um, we have a lot of folks do now, they do these Zoom classes. So just be careful in the middle here. When they, they do, um, uh, they need a kind of a semi private little nook. Uh -huh. uh, you know, a lot of people are, are, you know, they may be talking to family members in another country, right. they oh, may be goodness. doing a business call, they might be doing something with one, you know, a, a session where they want a little bit more privacy. So we've set this up over here for a kind of um, like seated spaces where they can get a little bit of distance from everything else, all the, there can be sort of a little bit of noise and chaos around class time, so they'll be able to, to work in there and get a little bit more quiet space. It's all gonna have state-of-the-art Wi-Fi, of course, so like really fast connection, there won't be any latency. Um, you'll just be able to get that video and that connection that you want, so it'll be there. This room, this room over here is where a lot of the magic is gonna take place. This is the main training space. So people come in, we usually do about, uh, we'll have 12, 12 to 14, uh, machines arrayed around the outside of the wall. They can have windowed fronts so people can see them. So one of the challenges here is when you have a lot of people, and there will be times there's going to be 100 people, you know, in for coming through and doing classes. Above our heads, you're going to see when it's completed, there is a kind of hanging, um, these baffles. It looks like wood, but it's actually uh, like felt. And they, they're just slats that go this way. And they, with the, the carpet here and the baffles above you, it'll really reduce that echo and the, from the noise. So people, if you have a lot of people in here, if you're having a session in the front and somebody's making a presentation, that baffle will dampen echo and it'll make it easier for people to hear. You know, there's so many of these technologies have, audit, have assistive elements to them. Um, auditory or visual. So when people have a hard time hearing, which is very common, we can set them up with, you know, yes, there's, an, there's an iPhone um, element where you can set it to have like a microphone that, that goes to your headphone, and we can have them put the mic at the front of the class and just plop a headphone in and they can hear better. It, it'll, um, it'll augment their, their auditory performance. And so we're working to accommodate that in a, in a kind of a 
a kind of uh, a non-intrusive way. It's very accepting. You know, people are, are in, you come in if you need. Also, for people who have visual impairment, there's um, a lot of settings that we can set up on the on the machines that help them as well, and people come around. Want to make it as seamless as possible. So here's going to be your group classes. On directly across is a seminar space. So this is more for smaller classes, um, typically around a table using tablets or mobile devices. A um, little bit more smaller room, a little bit more cl closed off there. Not quite as grand speaking with you know the setting up thing, but it, they'll all have trainer um, screens to use to support it. And then over here you'll have more couches and set setups here. I think the couches end about here because we do a lot of events. Right. And one of the reasons we really love this space is you have this kind of nice open element here where you can set up a screen in the back against that rear wall. And so you can get a screen back there and we can set up chairs in rows across here and you can put in like 50 or 60 chairs. So, and so what you'll see a lot of you know, usually like once every week or usually every week or two, you'll have a, a, some kind of event. Often they can be as many as two or three per week. It's very easy to set the chairs up. There's a section in the back here, they just roll right into that back room. So when we're not doing an event, this is a nice open space. And then when we are doing events, the staff can just, or staff and volunteers usually will just set up the chairs. It takes about 20 minutes to set up for an event. It's really, it's, it's really modular. Um, we're going to have, uh, you know, amplification, we're going to have a drop-down screen that'll drop down across that rear wall. And you'll see, if you come in for an event, you'll see people seated. There's going to be a coffee bar over here, I'll talk about that in a second. But you'll have people that can move in and out without disrupting the event. And that's why it's designed to be kind of seamless for that. This area over here, careful here, this area over here is going to have, um, uh, it's, it, we're calling it a, a, like a production space. One of the things that's happening is a lot of people come in, as you can relate to, like you're doing art, right? So they want a place where they can do digital art. They can do maybe mix their music that they've been working on. They can do, uh, you know, something. They want to do podcasting and they want to have a place to podcast from. This whole space is going to be state-of-the-art production stuff so that people can express themselves and get that stuff into digital formats. And this is where, you know, we've sort of evolved with our thinking over the years at Oats. People love just to have a little coffee or a little snack, and it helps to kind of set a tone for their spaces. Yeah, and Miami, you gotta have a Kubanito. You gotta have a Kubanito, exactly. And so it's, we, we did, we started building these into the centers, and it's been very popular. So we did one out in Colorado, and people really use the coffee bar, and they really love it. Um, we're gonna add one in, in the next version in New York, but this is the first center that we've ever created in, in this, in Florida, in the region that focuses just on tech. And this coffee bar will be like a critical element to kind of create a social uh, kind of energy around it. So this area here will be some banquettes, and this rear wall is gonna have a coffee bar with, you know, just some sort of uh, cabinets and stuff. And then out here, there's gonna be an exit to the patio where you can sit outdoors or indoors. So if the weather permits, and it's, you know, a nice fall day and reasonably temperate, you can sit outside. There's nice seating with a little canopy over it. Uh, there's also some parking out in the back as well, you know, for folks that want to park in the rear. Yeah. You guys were asking about the mural in the front. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, um, that's part maybe that, it, I don't know, today I may be most excited about where the muralist is coming later. Um, when we came to when we saw all this outside art and we were like, this is so much of a, it, it, it's the right kind of eye for senior planet because it's yeah. about creative expression, it's about public space, it's about, it's a little edgy, yes. you know, because graffiti has that history yes, of being yes, kind of yes. underground. And so when we, but a lot of the commercial spaces in the neighborhood, as you know, have these murals on the front of the buildings. So we decided that we wanted to commission one. Uh -huh. And Cabrina and the team tracked down the Museum of Graffiti, which is not far from here, yes, it's right on the yes, corner. Yes, I saw that. Cool. And so they're, they, yeah. they've yeah. been pulling together, you know, they of course showcase all these, you know, internationally yeah. renowned murals, yeah. but a lot of them are local. And we looked through, they pulled, we explained what we were trying to do, and they, went through the whole list of potential artists that are out here doing these kinds of murals. And then we all settled on one that we thought was great and his name is Rage Johnson. He's Miami oh, based, shoot. got the cool name Rage. Yes. And he has this kind of very, um, it's sort of art forward in a way. It, it's very three dimensional. So it's oh, less sad. Basquiat in that sense. Yeah, he's got a lot yeah, of perspective. Yeah. So he's working on treatments right now and he has palettes that are that are vibrant, but but they're they're like accessible for people. I wanted it to be something where you show up. It's the first thing you see, yeah. right? Cool. So we wanted it to be something where you come and it feels warm and welcoming, but it's also memorable enough, 
right? Like the people, you see it once and when you drive by it again, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, now I'm at Senior Plan, I know where to go.